his home, a spring Nancy home. There's a really strange missing persons case happening right now that everybody should be talking about. The mystery in Guatemala after a California woman went missing while kayaking. The details in this case are bizarre because it involves a whole group of people who basically refuse to talk to authorities. What are you so scared of, Christina? What you got to hide? We want the truth. We want to understand what happened. He had said in an Instagram comment basically like, oh, I hope that her body is found. What do you mean her body? No one said she was dead. I need us all to care. You need to also care about Nancy Ng. Where is Nancy Ng and what happened to her? It's mid-October. You and your husband watch from shore as the teacher and his followers begin to come into view. When the two of you rented the kayaks to the group earlier that day, the surface of the water was still as glass. But now as the travelers return from their leisurely day out on the lake, the conditions have become quite rough and you're glad they are coming in now. But as the kayakers draw close enough to make out individually, you notice that there are eight of them. But you clearly remember ten vessels being taken out this morning. That's when you spot them. Two kayakers in the distance, separated from the rest of the group, paddling further and further away, out of sight. You're beginning to feel like something is wrong. A feeling that becomes significantly worse when only one kayaker reappears and joins back up with the group. When the nine yoga enthusiasts return to shore, their leader ushers away one of the students, who is clearly distressed, and the entire group leaves without paying or even uttering a single word to you or your husband. The next day, you call the hotel where the group is staying, looking for the payments for the kayak rentals. That's when you learn that they've already left, not only the hotel, but the country. Today, we will be delving into the chilling story of Nancy Ng's mysterious disappearance, a story which has recently captured the attention of the internet's true crime community and the focused efforts of its amateur detectives. However, is this a case of social media sleuths jumping to conclusions? Or are we witnessing a case similar to that of Gabby Petito, where the public came together and used social media as a tool to gather and share evidence that was pivotal to aiding investigators in solving the case. And with these questions in mind, let's go through all the evidence we have so far. When it came to herding the family together for a photo op, lightening the mood with a long-winded joke, or engaging in a conversation on any subject with anyone, Nancy Ng was always game. Perhaps this seemingly natural ability to take the lead came from Nancy's year studying law at California State University. Perhaps it was a byproduct of her career as a school assistant to students with disabilities in her local district. Hey. Maybe being the eldest of four siblings had something to do with it. Whatever the source of Nancy's charisma was, these moments, along with her token heartfelt smile, hug, and laugh, were enough to enliven any room the 29-year-old entered. So beautiful! But beneath Nancy's non-stop energy was a practiced calmness, something she could turn on in the right environment, and her yoga studio provided that. Yep, on top of being an experienced hiker and adventurer, Nancy was also a devoted yogi, three interests that likely made an opportunity she was presented with in 2022 all the more appealing. See, this was the year Nancy's yoga instructor hosted a retreat along the picturesque Lake Atitlan, situated among lush rainforests, volcanoes, and various indigenous communities of Guatemala, the body of water that's located 1,500 meters above sea level and covers an area of over 132 kilometers, has become something of a wellness hotspot for years. And it was at this oasis where Nancy was able to own her zen for days. In fact, according to Nancy's sister Nikki, attending this retreat and partaking in its itinerary only once wasn't going to cut it. She loved it so much she wanted to go back again. So, Nancy made the last-minute decision to attend the 2023 retreat, bidding her family adieu on October 14th to head back to Lake Atitlan. Once she landed, she texted her family to confirm she'd arrived safely and wished her brother a happy birthday. 
Nancy then reminded them that she was unplugging for a few days, so they wouldn't be hearing from her for a while. Little did the Ng family know how long that while would be. See, the getaway was reportedly meant to last for seven full days, before Nancy was due to arrive back in Monterey Park, California on October 22nd. But as fate would have it, Nancy wouldn't make use of that return ticket. As five days into her trip, the 29-year-old simply disappeared. An eerie video captured the last sighting of Nancy that morning of October 19th at roughly 10 a.m. In the footage, she paddled towards a group of nine other members of the retreat as they took off on a kayak excursion. And while Nancy's expression isn't visible, her wave towards the camera suggested the 29-year-old was in high spirits and completely unaware of what would occur moments later. It's hard to watch. Um, you know, clearly she looks happy and excited to be out on the lake. Later that day, Nancy's father received a cryptic phone call from the retreat's organizer. Nancy wouldn't be coming home, the voice on the other line informed him. His daughter was missing. As for why the eldest child of the Ng family was no longer returning, that remained unclear. We don't really know what exactly what happened. Um, the witnesses that were able to see what happened have not been extremely communicative. And unfortunately, the mysterious details surrounding the disappearance of Nancy Ng would only grow. For the Ng family, their lives were unrecognizable from what they had been just days before Nancy left to Guatemala. It was like a joint birthday celebration, so we had a family dinner. And we didn't know that would be the last time that we'd see her. Happiness, it seemed, had now been put on hold as their father began sleeping with a phone next to him at night. Like he's hoping for a ransom call, you know, something that will prove that Nancy might still be alive and that she's out there and she's just waiting for us to find her. And they held their breath, waiting for Nancy's travel companions to come forward with information. After all, without any leads, finding Nancy was next to impossible, as the Guatemalan Navy proved after they called off their search of Lake Adelan after 72 hours. So, the Ying family was forced to get creative, launching a GoFundMe to fund the private search and rescue company, Black Wolf Helicopters, that scoured the lake from above and volunteer divers that search from below. However, without a clear timeline of events that could potentially narrow their search of the vast landscape. I can't confirm she ever went in the water. Uh, there were witnesses who've now returned to the United States who've not been forthcoming. It didn't take long until the scan of the surface of the body of water was exhausted. We searched 90-95% of the lake. And the implications that came with this lack of discovery became hard to ignore. It could potentially be a or a homicide, we don't know. The Ying family had also begun to question the circumstances of Nancy's disappearance, as various retreaters allegedly ignored the family's attempts to find answers. We just really want to find Nancy and bring her home. Um, we want the truth, we want to understand what happened. Yet, understanding what happened required transparency, something the retreaters, for whatever reason, seemed unwilling to give the Ying family. There are people that witnessed what happened um, within the group that have not come forward, and we're racking our brains as to why they wouldn't want to come forward and help if nothing nefarious happened. But then, Nancy's family received word from the prosecutor's office that a witness had come forward with a testimony that was curiously missing from Guatemala's attorney general's office report. According to the retreat member's statement, she and Nancy were two kilometers into the lake when Nancy decided she wanted to go for a swim, a spur-of-the-moment decision that allegedly cost Nancy her life. Yes, according to the witness, Nancy had drowned. Yet, on GoFundMe, the Eng family claimed this statement was difficult to accept for a few reasons. One being that the participants of the retreat they had been able to speak to never mentioned Nancy getting out of her kayak. Two being that they had specifically reached out to this woman over three weeks without receiving any word back. And three being that this contradicted the official information they received. What's curious to us is that we don't have that witness report in our police report. On their GoFundMe, the family expressed their frustration, writing, This woman's silence has not only hindered our search efforts, it's made an unbearable three weeks all the more agonizing. And every new piece of information the family received only seemed to stir more questions. 
For example, why had the group allegedly waited 24 hours to report Nancy missing? Why had Guatemala's attorney general's office reported that they weren't able to interview the witness or the tour guide because they left the country after Nancy's disappearance? And why were those who attended the retreat remaining so tight-lipped? The family couldn't rationalize this behavior, and neither could former CIA officer and FBI agent Tracy Walder when she sat down for an interview with Crime and Law Network. Is that normal for these people not to be cooperative? In my opinion, no. Um, that would be my first, I guess, red flag. <laughs> and while Tracy acknowledged it was impossible to predict people's behavior in a moment of crisis, it was the way the retreaters had acted following their trip that struck her as odd. Maybe they're just making poor choices. I don't know. Um, but the fact that they're being subversive and they're not being forthcoming, in my opinion, is disconcerting. But while the retreaters may have taken a vow of silence, there were two other people that saw Nancy on the morning of October 19th, and they wanted answers as well. Lee and Elaine Beal own and operate Kayak Guatemala, the rental company that the yoga retreat had hired that fateful day. Together, the pair had watched as the 10-person group headed out on the calm waters of Lake Adelan that soon turned choppy. And as the kayakers began to return, Lee and Elaine noticed the number had gone from 10 to 8. However, in the distance, two kayakers remained paddling. One was Nancy, and the other was a woman from the retreat, the same woman that would later allege Nancy had drowned. The owners of the kayak rental company watched as the two kayakers paddled out of view, a journey that was followed by the call of a distress signal. After that, only one kayaker returned, and Nancy Ng was nowhere in sight. I witnessed the survivor being ushered up the steps with the yoga instructor, she was clearly distressed and they didn't say a word to us. The owners of the kayak rental company called the hotel the next morning because the group had yet to pay their bill. That's allegedly when they learned the retreaters had left, a detail that still doesn't sit right with Elaine. I just don't understand that part of leaving within eight hours of, you know, 12 hours of the accident. And the internet was just as dumbfounded. See, when the Ng family sent out their plea for action, Please help us bring Nancy home. They likely had no clue how seriously TikTok users would take this mission. Yet, from the puzzling detail of the group allegedly cutting their retreat short in the face of a missing member, The whole group of nine people changed their flights and left a day early within 8 to 12 hours after Nancy's disappearance without giving a single statement or trying to look for her to their subsequent silence. The details in this case are bizarre because it involves a whole group of people who basically witnessed Nancy go missing, yet most of them refused to talk to authorities. It became social media's mission to draw attention to Nancy Ng's case. If you care so much about Gabby Petito's case, you need to also care about Nancy Ng. As everyone from strangers, somebody's gotta know something, to friends, I just want to use my platform to spread some awareness on her disappearance because uh, she is a college friend and she's an extremely nice person. Use their platforms to help Nancy's disappearance make headlines. But would a certain witness coming forward bring some much needed clarity to the case? That's right. The formerly unnamed retreater who claimed Nancy had drowned was ready to tell her side of the story. Well, at least she was ready to tell her side of the story through her attorney. Representing retreat member and San Bernardino County Public Defender Christina Blazek in an interview with ABC News, attorney Christopher Gardner vouched for his client's innocence. To say that my client hasn't done all she can is just not true. According to what Christina told her attorney, on October 19th, she had kayaked to the middle of Lake Atilan to see where the water changed color due to the lake's depth. It's when she was turning back that she claimed she saw Nancy. The two started chatting, which was when Nancy allegedly told Christina her plan. She wanted to go for a swim. Christina claimed she advised against this, seeing that the waters of the lake had become rough and the current was strong. Despite Christina's warning, Nancy allegedly jumped in, pushing her kayak back in the process. According to Christina's attorney, she put one of her legs onto Nancy's kayak to stop it from floating away and pushed it back to Nancy. She then lost the kayak again, leading Christina to turn around to get the vessel. And when she turned back around, missing was gone. Christina then allegedly let go of the kayak and began shouting for Nancy, but the water was black and Nancy, she was nowhere in sight. As for the rumor that the group fled the country, Christina's attorney claimed this was false and that she went to speak to Guatemalan authorities after the incident and has cooperated with the FBI since they became involved in the investigation. However, 
Being a tourist herself, she couldn't provide precise coordinates as to where she had last seen Nancy. Besides, according to Christina's story, there was little officers could do anyway, as they allegedly told her the lake was notorious for drownings. But if Nancy's passing was a freak accident, why hadn't Christina reached out to the Ng family? This was something Nancy's sister Nikki couldn't grasp. I don't understand how she could choose to leave my family in the dark for almost four weeks and not just say that from the start. <laughs> so while the family expressed their appreciation on their GoFundMe for Christina's statements, as every piece of information is invaluable, they wished they hadn't had to wait weeks to hear this, writing, For instance, as stated by our head of search and rescue, the detail about Christina kayaking to where the lake changes color due to the depth could have helped this team focus their initial search on the deepest part of the lake where the water is opaque. Given the urgent, time-sensitive nature of the search, we only wish we could have received such information sooner. According to the family, they reached out to Christina through email on October 25th and on October 31st, only to receive no word back. Yet, according to Christina's attorney, his client had a reason for leaving the family hanging. Yep, Christopher Gardner claimed Christina needed time to recover from what she had witnessed, and the Ng family's threats weren't helping. They, the family, tell her they understand she has been through a traumatic experience. But then they tell her she needs to come forward to assist authorities. And they say in the same email, if she doesn't come forward, they'll make her come forward he claimed. However, the Ng family denied their email was threatening and even shared the contents of the messages to their GoFundMe to prove this. On October 25th, they extended their sympathy for what Christina might have witnessed in the water and asked her to not hesitate to reach out as search efforts needed her help. On October 31st, they followed up, questioning why Christina was silent and writing that if she didn't cooperate, they'll pursue the matter, which from the Ng family's perspective was a far cry from a threat. They also pointed out that the 100-plus page report they received from the Guatemalan Public Prosecutor's Office hadn't contained her testimony, and as far as they knew, they still hadn't been able to secure it. And while they could understand a level of PTSD following the incident, they questioned, why after our numerous attempts to privately appeal to the goodness of her heart, she is only now stepping forward publicly through her attorney? I hope she could understand that we have no account of what happened because she is the only person that saw what happened and it wasn't included in the report. But while the family refrained from assigning guilt, and we're not blaming anybody or, or accusing anybody of anything, we, we, all we want is just, we want answers and we want to bring Nancy home. The internet wasn't so diplomatic. TikToker Etch-A-Sketch had been following the Nancy Ng case since the beginning. And thanks to doing his own sleuthing, as well as being in contact with Nancy's family and the search and rescue team, he was privy to some information that was, well, of interest. For example, the TikToker had learned that Christina had allegedly worked for Harvey Weinstein's company when Harvey was arrested. On top of that, her now attorney had also been in hot water after she was sued by his subordinates for $3 million for SH. So from etch sketches perspective, well, you know what they say about the company you keep. Oh yeah, I'm sorry if I don't trust your accounts or trust you because of your actions of not being accountable and the people that you're associating yourself with. And then there was what allegedly occurred following the events of October 19th that to the TikToker didn't seem like the actions someone familiar with the law should take in an emergency. You woke up every morning, Monday through Friday, put on a suit, went into a courtroom, into your office where you're defending people, talking to judges, interacting with the police officers, telling witnesses and your clients to tell the truth, knowing full well that you fled a country where a woman disappeared and you actively did nothing to help find her. As one Reddit user put it, this is very simple. Christina Blazik is an attorney. If her account were true, then as soon as she came back to shore, she would have did everything she could to help authorities locate the body. She would have been able to take them to the vicinity of where she says now all of this happened. Instead, she came to shore and ran back to the U.S. ASAP and lawyered herself up. Then, her lawyer took a month to shape the narrative of his client's behalf. Blazik was afraid of being accused of something, and she ran away. But Christina wasn't the only person under trial by internet. Eddie Ramada has recently been named as Nancy's yoga instructor and retreat organizer in the press, although social media users had already tied him to the case days before this, as his social media clearly attached him to the retreat from stories. On the host's Insta, he pinned this story that was taken on October 15th, the first day of the retreat this year, which means that this is one of the last videos of Nancy that was taken before she disappeared. To eerie comments. He had said in an Instagram comment, basically like, oh, I hope that her body is found. 
What do you mean her body? No one said she was dead. And as Eddie allegedly began to scrub evidence of the recent retreat from his socials, etch sketch had one question. What do you have to hide, Yogi Eddie? If he was hiding anything, the TikToker was determined to reveal it, with the help of some of Eddie's alleged former students at his studio, Hot 8 Yoga. And do you want to know how people who knew Nancy and Eddie described their relationship? Multiple people said that she wasn't just attending his class, a lot of people used this exact word to describe their relationship, friends. And Eddie, after witnessing his friend disappear in a lake at his retreat, decides to come back and immediately starts teaching class the very next week, while none of the students even know about it because this information hasn't come out until recently, almost a month later, and even some of the retreat goers were back in class immediately. In fact, Eddie had allegedly told a member of the class who asked how the retreat had gone that it was great and remained his smiley self, despite that he'd come back from the trip one student short. Someone who works with Eddie told me that he literally doesn't care and just wants this to go away. Oh, and Christina Blazik, the lawyer, also regularly attends Eddie's class at Hot 8 Yoga. There were also allegations that Eddie had been fired from another studio, and etch -a sketch believed this could have something to do with TikTok user and LA-based yoga instructor Alex R's accusation. I've been in his class before and I had a very bad experience. Um, he actually physically attacked me on the way out of that class. I was in a post called Rabbit and he put his fingers in my hip creases as if to draw me back. And when I told him no, we, we got into an argument right there like in the class on my yoga mat. According to Alex, the instructor took offense to her request for him not to touch her, and she decided to remove herself from the situation by getting up to leave the class. And he follows me as I'm walking out the door to hold the door open for me to walk out. And as I'm walking out, he puts his hand on my shoulder and he he pushes me out the door. It seemed Eddie's purported people skills hadn't improved in this interaction, as a Reddit user that claimed to be in touch with the Ng family, as well as TikToker Etch-a-Sketch, alleged Eddie had only responded to the family's request to speak in order to berate them about how bad they're making him look. The user also claimed that there's also tons of accounts coming forward stating he touched students inappropriately and that he is a narcissist with a cult-like following at Hot 8 Yoga. Speaking of which, Hot 8 Yoga has also come under fire as allegations surfaced that the studio told customers not to speak about Nancy yet, yet were reportedly planning to capitalize on the tragedy just the same. Multiple of their employees told me that for the last four weeks, there was radio silence on Nancy, and now that her story is gaining traction in the media, all of a sudden, they want to throw a candlelight vigil for Nancy. And I hope they do, because I'm going to be there front and center. And the studio also seemed to have a strange response to Nancy's disappearance, as when one zero-star Google review requested that they find Nancy after she went missing, they allegedly responded, Nancy is on a retreat out of the country. She will be back as soon as she returns and is leading a teacher training in January. Thank you for your interest in Nancy. But it wasn't just the internet that was fixated on Eddie Romana and Christina Blazik. On November 13th, the rescue team the Ng family had hired posted to their Instagram that the criminal case now had two persons persons of interest. And would you look at that? The first person is Eduardo, aka Eddie Ramada, the yoga instructor. And would you look at that second name? Christina Marie Blazik. And while the FBI had stated that they are not aware of any evidence of foul play and witnesses were cooperating, Etcha Sketch's recent interaction with Eddie put the yogi under even more suspicion. See, the TikToker received a DM from Eddie where the yoga instructor accused him of spreading misinformation on the case. To make his point, Eddie attached a plane ticket that he claimed proved that he didn't flee the country but were instead scheduled to fly out on October 21st. When I first saw this, I was like, that doesn't really prove anything. But today, for some reason, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to see if I can prove when this ticket was bought. And would you look at that? I used the information that Eddie sent me on his ticket screenshot to find his actual receipt. Notice all of the information is exactly the same. Now look right here. What does that say? Date of purchase, Friday, October 20th after Nancy disappeared already. And an anonymous source that reached out to etch -a had allegedly been able to access the United Airlines system to find evidence that Eddie was originally set to fly out on October 22nd. But would you look at that? On October 20th, hours after Nancy disappeared, he canceled that ticket. 
and then continue to purchase this ticket on the 20th to fly out the next day on the 21st. Still, what conclusion was all this finger pointing attempting to draw? Well, given the sparse and conflicting details of the case, along with first-hand accounts the internet had deemed unreliable, it's no surprise that some social media users found the case, as one Reddit user so eloquently put it, effin' sketch. And this meant netizens were circling the disturbing verdict that Nancy hadn't drowned, at least not on her own. Various theories that Nancy had been the victim of a hate crime, a ritualistic sacrifice, or trafficking developed online. And the travel advisory Guatemala was under, due to violent crimes, only encouraged further disturbing conclusions. Including extortion, armed robbery, carjacking, narcotics, trafficking, and gang activity. Others have pointed out these retreats are notorious for using hallucinogenic substances, which could perhaps explain why Nancy had allegedly jumped out of her kayak, etch -a sketches claim that her room at the hotel was ransacked, and the group's odd behavior following Nancy's disappearance. However, according to those who knew Nancy, this would be widely out of character. Not only did everyone that I talked to who knew Nancy personally tell me that that was not her vibe in the least, but the Search and Rescue team also stated that they found nothing to suggest that substances were involved at all. Instead, those who allegedly knew Eddie told the TikToker that the alleged mess in Nancy's room likely wasn't Eddie's attempt to hide incriminating substances, but evidence of Eddie's previously mentioned lack of organizational skills, as he was likely searching the room for emergency contact information that he neglected to ask his students for. And from etch -a sketches sources, while Eddie did have his adoring pupils, calling this group a cult might be a stretch. Again, doesn't mean it's not a possibility, but highly unlikely. As for the theory dominating comment sections that Nancy had been trafficked, according to the search and rescue team working on Nancy's case, that was not in the realm of possibilities. See, the search and rescue team is Black Wolf Helicopter Special Operations Aviation and Training, which is comprised of former UK and US Special Forces who specialize and currently work with these type of cases. And with their knowledge and expertise, they've been able to fully rule this out. But did that mean Christina's testimony was correct? Well, there's no doubt the waters in Lake Adelan can be treacherous, as various internet users who visited the location or similar bodies of water pointed out. Lakes, especially large lakes, can have strong undercurrents. People tend to only think of the ocean or rivers having them. Big misconception. In fact, TikToker Lydia's Travel Adventures had proof of just how dangerous Lake Atilan could get. While the lake seemed pretty calm in the morning, by the afternoon the currents could actually get quite rough. And here is a video I took of my mom the same day we were considering kayaking. And the apparent dangers of the lake have led to blame being cast in a different direction. See, when Inside Edition reporter Lisa Guerrero traveled to Guatemala in search of answers. Lake. She might not have found Nancy, but she was able to connect with a source that needed to be questioned, Elaine Beal. But what did the co-owner of Kayak Guatemala have to do with Nancy's disappearance? Well, it turned out Christina Blazik's attorney claimed the retreat goers weren't offered life jackets by the company, an allegation the owner denied to Lisa Guerrero. That's not true. We give people the opportunity to take a life jacket, and for this group, they all said no to taking life jackets. Yet, to Nikki Ng, turning down that offer didn't sound like her sister. We went kayaking in New York, we were offered life vests, and we both wore them. So I know for a fact that if they had offered it, she would have taken it. And while some users theorized that Nancy could have refused to wear the protective garment due to peer pressure or simply going with the crowd, others pointed out that life jackets should be a non-negotiable. It's highly irresponsible of the kayak company owners to give them the choice to take a life jacket. It should be obligatory. Still, some have claimed that Nancy's remains would have been discovered by now if she was in the water. But things are not adding up because if she had drowned, her body would have resurfaced. However, it seems that might not be the case when you consider Lake Etitlan's size. It's extremely likely that you would never find a body of someone that drowned down there. And depth. And at that high of an altitude, the air is less dense, which means that you are less buoyant, which not only means that it's a little bit easier to drown, but it also means that your body will most likely sink to the bottom. And because divers can only dive to about 300, 330 feet, which means that if Nancy drowned where it's about a thousand feet deep, not only can the divers not go down that far to be able to search for her body, but there's only a handful of people in the world with the equipment and the expertise to be able to effectively use sonar to look for her body. Thankfully, according to a recent update from 
from Etch-A-Sketch. The family is bringing in someone to do just that with a machine that can not only identify bodies with photos, but retrieve them from the lake's floor. Which means that if the team is able to locate and find Nancy's body, and if there was any foul play involved with any of the people that was involved in this trip, then we probably are going to find out. And while the search and rescue team, as well as the operator of the sonar equipment, have both allegedly reached out to Christina and her attorney to help narrow down their search, they didn't respond to either of them. The search effort has allegedly discovered some potentially incriminating evidence. See, when Nancy's kayak was found, it was missing the paddle, despite there being no reports from Christina that the kayak had flipped at any point, or Nancy's paddle had fallen out. So, the search and rescue team allegedly studied the movement of the water from the day Nancy disappeared. And what did they find? Nancy's paddle. Which means that Nancy's kayak didn't flip over somewhere along the lake somewhere else after it floated after she disappeared. It happened right when Nancy disappeared. Was it possible Nancy hadn't jumped out of her kayak, but was forced? This question and more may soon be answered as two of Nancy's siblings, Nikki and Jonathan, allegedly head down to Lake Atitlan for what could very well be the last days of the search for Nancy Ng, a conclusion that wouldn't have been possible without the internet users that rallied together to raise over $117,000 to help bring Nancy home. From the concerning silence of retreat goers, Your first thought is, um, is it a potential drowning? But then the question comes, if it is um, a drowning and nothing nefarious was done, why aren't witnesses coming forward? To the bizarre behavior of the supposed suspects. What are you so scared of, Christina? What you got to hide? I get wanting an attorney uh, when you speak to law enforcement, but if this is simply a missing person situation, I'm not sure why they would want to lawyer up that quickly. That guy gives me a really bad vibe. He gives me a, a really, really, really bad vibe. As the disappearance of Nancy Ng potentially heads towards its conclusion, the murky details of this case may finally be made clear. I literally have goosebumps right now because I went from thinking that we will never find out what happened to Nancy and that Nancy will never get justice to now being told that they have a machine that will definitely be able to retrieve the body. In the meantime, the Ng family works to find peace in the fact that Nancy lived her life to the fullest. Just looking through her photos, from this trip, we can tell that she was really happy and really having a good time. And that brings me some, some comfort. And that the public won't let the case go cold. I need us all to care the same way we cared about Gabby. This is the story of Nancy Ng, the woman who vanished in Guatemala without a trace.